uh, is there growing envy as a result of uh, big data being available, so much information flying Thanks around? Thanks to social media, perhaps, right? I mean, everybody can see, everybody can see the life of the, the ultra rich and famous, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and also, as Kevin mentioned just now about WeChat, uh, actually in the WeChat uh, uh, leader in China is that if you uninstall WeChat, your uh, your anxiety level will reduce uh, by 50%. Because you know with the WeChat, uh, you, you just move your fingertips, you will know your friend's lives. And most people only post the, the shining side of their life on WeChat. So you always, she has a new house. Oh, she has a new boyfriend. <laughs> oh, she was traveling in Paris. They well, don't say the rats that is in the house, right? <laughs> they don't talk about that. Yeah. So, those, so actually, for especially I think for young people, why there's more and more mental issues or depression for young people is they don't understand that uh, the social media uh, is a colorful bu bubble. Yeah. You only see the shining part of people's life. That is where you get the pressure from. Yeah, and they don't. They don't also don't get the value of time, right? Um, when I was growing up, um, I, I knew that whatever I wanted, I have to work several years for it, <laughs> right? Uh, but now you you have people that uh, start a job and and within a few months they want to be promoted, and if they if they're not, uh, the anxiety level goes up because they they think they they're not succeeding and. These are all part of the, the, the whole problem that you're talking about, yeah. Was there like a wow moment, or, you know, the, oh my goodness, the light bulb moment when you were getting into it and you realized how big data was going to be useful to you? It, it was both, it was both a wow moment as well as a lot of question marks. The role of leaders is still there, but then how you add value changes, right? Because a lot of stuff that you took pride in doing today can be done better by, by automation or by a computer or by a system. But so it's really kind of that, wow, we can do all this now as a smart organization. And okay, but then what, how do we redefine how we add value or, or how, how we contribute in, in the new context? Uh, the first thing that employees in any company think about automated solution is that, oh, they're after my job, you know? Mm -hmm. So th there is that problem. And, and the second problem is that in order to get things done properly, you have to do some efforts up front, and nobody wants to take responsibility for that because they don't want to ex extend their work beyond six o'clock or five o'clock, whatever that is. So there are different reasons for people to push back. Uh, and, and most of it has really nothing to do with data per se, is to do with the fact that we're trying to change. And change is always scary. So you yeah. have to always deal with that kind of human aspect of it. Like people don't want to give up the control of data. So for example, I, I don't name the company, a very big publication company in Singapore. So one of the uh, the marketing director was my executive uh, student, uh, executive education student. He shared a story with the classmates. He said one day a friend called him very angrily saying, I received the same five same five same spamming email from your company on the same day. Why you spam me, me five times? Mm -hmm. The reason is very simple. This poor guy subscribed to five different publications from this company. Each of these publications kept an uh, independent uh, customer database. So when the group decided to spam, they spam him five times. So if he subscribed 10 publications, he will receive this email 10 times on the same day. Yeah. So why, so I ask, why do you don't have integration? Do you know why you do, in this state of, uh, in this era of data, we need to have the hub and spoke model when you do analytics. You need to integrate data. So he said the, the different uh, departments, they want to control their own data. Should we keep all the data available to us and um, uh, make it accessible in the future? So, so this is a question that like, uh, what is the cost of keeping and storing uh, and all the data that is available to you. And what is an opportunity cost? Maybe in the future, you identify the application of the data. Because currently you store the data, you make it accessible to the organization. It may not have uh, the value currently. However, in the future, you may discover, uh, you may derive value or uh, application out of it. So the suggestion is you keep it. In develop developmental economics, there's a concept called leapfrogging. Leap leapfrogging. 
Fully foggy means uh, uh, for the backward society, they actually can jump into, they can, uh, they can get rid of the middle uh, uh, technology. They can jump into the most advanced technology. And so for example, in China, in terms of mobile payment, uh, our uh, amount of uh, uh, mobile payment is 50 times, five zero times of the amount in the United States, while our population is only five times. So actually, if you look at the original payment, like a credit card, check, so China, we, we, we don't use check. So we don't go through this uh, period. We jump directly to cashless payment. Uh, Prof Lee talked about China, right? So I think WeChat is a perfect model, right? They, they look at doing everything on the mobile. If, if, if ever anyone, I told the guys in the US, I said, you know, there is no equivalent to WeChat program in the West. Um, and, and what you see is just the tip of the iceberg of where they're trying to go. If you actually take it and you project forward, depending on the compute, the power of the, the, the mobile phone and how accessible a lot of these software and applications are today. And there's a lot of free education out there that people are offering. There is a lot of opportunity for people today at the bottom of the pyramid to become the future billionaires of the world, because that is already happening. Look at all the look at all the KOCs and the KOLs and everyone in in in, in these emerging markets. They have really built the business based on network insights that they gain from their own uh, from their own learning and, and mobile and, and just leveraging very basic technology, right? So I think it does provide a lot of opportunities. If you look at the baseline of living standard, it's increasing. Yeah, however, the gap is getting bigger and bigger between yeah. the richest and the poorest. And unfortunately, people's perception of happiness is not determined by the baseline. It's determined by the, by the comparison, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. You see, uh, there was, I don't remember exactly. Some years ago, there was some riots in London, and then and, and people just, just uh, went in and smashed some shop windows and went into the shops. And, you know, you would ima imagine something like that. 200 years ago, uh, people would have gone to steal bread, right? Or, or fruit or something, right? Yeah. But today, the same group of people, same kind of like for like kind of comparison, they go to, to get a better, bigger uh, um, uh, television set, you know? So it's not as if they're gonna die of hunger. You know, mm. if you don't have that television set, you're not gonna die of hunger. But you still feel the need for for that kind of behavior because you 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 think you justify. It.